Hey guys, I'm going to be building the DBE pumpkin pie in this video um, in this sort of live type of build that I've been doing lately. This effect is based on the EHX op amp big muff. It was used extensively in the 80s but obviously the most renowned use of this pedal is for the, um, the, the Smashing Pumpkins album Siamese Dream. So before we even start to assemble this pedal I think it's a good idea to have a listen to it and as is becoming customary I have a sound sample from Eric which we'll listen to right now and while that's playing I'm going to show some um, pictures of the components that you'll need to actually build um, this effect as well so um, just keep an eye on the screen too while you're listening to the music um, if you want to get an idea of what components you're going to need to uh, put this together So I hope that gives you a bit of an idea of what the actual completed effect sounds like and um, uh, you'll also have another chance to hear it at the end of the video when I've finished assembling it. Um, so just one other thing I wanted to quickly mention as well before we get into the actual um, body of the video is the bill of materials. You can get the list that you're looking at right now on the um, on the website um, so it's diyguitarpedals.com.au um, and then click on the DBE PCBs um, product category and then click on pumpkin pie and then the, in on that product page there'll be the bill of materials you click on that you go to the PDF and then you can see the, the bill of materials um, so uh, just looking at the bill of materials as well just want to mention that it says on there what sort of capacity you'll need if you're having a bit of trouble trying to work out which capacitor to use for the build uh, it'll say on there um, uh, what type of capacitor it is that you need depending on the value so fit will it, whether it will be ceramic film or electrolytic You'll also notice that the potentiometers have the size that the PCB is made for. So if you want to uh, PCB mount those uh, potentiometers, um, if you get 16 mil uh, with PCB mount lugs, um, you can just solder them straight into the into the board. So we'll start with the resistors. It's always a good idea to double check the value of the resistor before you solder it into the PCB. So I've got my multimeter which is auto ranging which means I don't need to change the dial for it to tell me what the um, what the resistance is. So this one comes up at 330, approximately 330 kilo, kilo ohms. So this resistor according to bill of materials will be R3. Bend down the legs at a right angle and solder it in place. So in this case R3 is down here in the corner so just slot it in and solder it in place. and then cut off the leads with some side cutters. Don't cut too close to where the solder is. You want to leave the solder, don't cut through the solder. And then the rest of the resistors is exactly the same process.
So here's an interesting real life problem. I've installed the 47 ohm resistor into the 47K slot and I just realized I actually did it the wrong way around. So how am I gonna get that out? Well, for me, the way I do it is cut off the, cut the component actually out of the PCB and then grab some pliers and grab onto the lead that's left over and you can, so, you can desolder from the back and pull it out. And then when the leads are removed from the pads, use your, use your desoldering pump and suck out the solder that's left. <clears throat> so the components removed now, and as you can see, the pads are open again, um, so you can get the leads through for the uh, replacement component. That doesn't happen too often for me, I actually haven't done that for a while, but um, uh, every now and then it's good practice uh, for desoldering pads. It's really important though that you clear the hole first, so pull out the lead before you try to desolder the pad, otherwise there's just too much material inside the pad and, and um, uh, the capillary action will hold the solder in, in place. So just pull out the lead first and then try and get the solder out. It's much easier doing it that way. So anyway, back to installing the resistors. So all the resistors are installed. Next I'm going to do the, um, I'm actually going to do the sockets. Um, the IC sockets, they'll go in next. Uh, it's important to put in sockets because um, desoldering sockets can be a little messy and um, a little time consuming. Speaking of sockets, I should also point out if you're going to do any of the mods on the, um, on the build dock, uh, which is on page 4, um, you should install some sockets for the components that you're going to be swapping around. So I'm just going to use these for the diodes so I can change the diodes out if I want to. But there is, another, uh, there is another modification on the build dock called the black toner mod. Um, if you want to do that, you'll have to actually socket the, some capacitors and some resistors. So the only diodes you actually have to socket are from D1 to D6. D7 is for reverse polarity protection. It doesn't actually affect your tone, so you don't need to socket that one. And the SIL um, single inline sockets will fit straight into those, um, into those pads in a row like that. And we'll install D7 while we're at it as well. Um, just like I mentioned in the oil tank of fuzz vi video, um, make sure that you install it the right way around. Um, it's, it's, uh, it has polarity, so the band on the diode needs to be in the same um, position as the band on the silk screen. So you can see that those two line up like that. If this diode's installed the wrong way around, the whole effect won't work, so it's important that you make sure that one goes in the right way. So we're probably already about at the halfway mark for the, um, for the PCB portion of the build. Um, so the next thing I think I'll do will be the capacitors. It's not really going to matter which way around we do this, um, whether it be uh, the film capacitors or the, um, uh, or the, or the uh, electrolytic. So I'll just go through them and, and put them in, in any random order. I do sometimes cut corners and, and solder three or four or five components in at once in a group like that. Um, but usually when I do these videos, I don't do that uh, because it's a little easier to make a mistake, even though it is a lot faster, it is um, a little easy to make a mistake. I try and make these videos beginner friendly, um, so I don't, I don't actually do that. But if you want to give it a shot, by all means, give it a try. Just make sure that you solder the right component into the right, into the right position. When you install the electrolytics, make sure you install them the right way around. The side with the band is usually the negative. You can see the negative symbol there on this one. Also, you can identify the negative by the short lead. There's a plus printed on the silk screen on the PCB, just so you make sure you put the right, the, the right lead into the right hole. So in this case, the long lead will go into the plus hole. So we're getting towards the end of the PCB build here. We've only got three things to do. The next one will be, we'll install the potentiometers. Again, just make sure you install the right value into the right um, position on the PCB. You can tell which control is labeled which, volume, tone, and sustain. Um, just double check those on the build dock uh, and you'll see, um, uh, you'll see which value goes into each of those positions. So volume is 10K, tone is 10K, and sustain is 50K. One thing I forgot to mention, these plastic covers need to come off. Um, uh, Eric doesn't use them um, and they are a little tight. You can get them on, but they're a little tight um, if you use them on his, um, 
on his layout. So just take that off and put some tape across the back to insulate the potentiometer from the solder joints on the back of the PCB because obviously if we install it like this it's going to make a connection um, on the back with um, all sorts of random components and that's obviously not what you want. So that's the pots installed and I've put some um, backing double-sided tape um, just to stop, as I was saying, the connections on the back of the, of the potentiometers. So the last thing to do now, um, before we can test it, uh, two more things, um, is to install the uh, in, uh, in 9 volt ground and out um, wires. Do whatever color you want, um, as long as you remember what's what. Um, and also it's a good idea to go in um, through the bottom uh, and solder at the top like, like we did with the um, potentiometer connections. Um, it just looks neater once you, um, when you install it into the enclosure. As you're probably seeing, this um, substance that I'm using, this putty sort of stuff, uh, I get questions a, a lot about what it actually is. It's called Blue Tack. Um, I don't know if this is an Australian thing, but um, uh, I use it for pretty much everything. And for soldering, it is really, really handy. As you can see, I'm holding that wire in place, and then I can, I can solder on top. Um, and I've, as you've seen, I've used it for pretty much everything. Um, so yeah, look up BlueTac if you're interested in getting some. Just be hygienic with it because you are using it, probably going to be using it with um, lead-based solder. So don't use it for anything else and don't obviously don't let children play with it um, once you start using it for soldering. So that's it for the PCB build. There'll be one more thing I'll do and that is uh, after I've tested it and that is just to hot, hot glue those, um, put a bit of hot glue around those wires. Um, just as I've said in the past, they tend to snap quite easily, um, particularly if it's just loose like this for a while, um, just from the movement going back and forwards, um, those connections, those the little strands of wires can break very easily. Um, and then the final thing to do is to just put these components into the, um, into, the, into the sockets. So again with the diodes and the ICs, just make sure that you install them the right way around. The dot on the IC should be closest to the socket uh, to the notch in the socket and the notch in the socket should be the right way around according to the silk screen underneath So now we can test it Which is actually going to have to happen in the morning because the kids are asleep And I'm pretty sure the wife's not going to want me cranking up the amp at 1030 at night um, So I'll do that in the morning, but um, one thing I did want to mention was uh, This whole process has taken me up to this point, which is around about halfway through the build It's taken me about an hour and that's with um, recording uh, the video as well um, so if you're new to pedal building it might take you about an hour as well to get to this point to be able to actually hear what the effect sounds like uh, it also depends on how much you're going to actually how much time you're going to spend on your enclosure and your graphics and things like that um, it may not be exactly halfway but it's approximately the halfway mark okay so it's the next day and here comes the fun part we can actually test this thing uh, I've just hooked it up and um, I actually did cheat. I wanted to see if it worked, so I did play around with it the other night, and it works um, first go, um, which you kind of expect, I guess, for a fabricated PCB and something that's pretty simple like this from somebody that has a lot of experience um, with building pedals. So let's have a listen to it um, and uh, see what it sounds like. At the moment, it doesn't sound like anything much at all because it's not turned on. Crank it up a bit. Maybe not quite that much. Wow, that just sounds so much different to a um, to a uh, a big muff. Um, you may also notice there's a bit of a hum. Um, this is because these wires, uh, because the circuit's not actually inside a, an enclosure. If you build a pedal like this and you get that hum, um, don't panic because it's probably just, it just needs to be shielded. I'll crank up the amp so you can hear what I'm talking about. That sort of hum sounds to me like um, RFI and it, will be so and it will be solved once you put it inside an enclosure. Let's hear it again.
That sounds really awesome. I reckon once I EQ this, I'll, I'll definitely be able to achieve that sort of wall of um, distortion or wall of fuzz sort of sound um, that um, uh, Smashing Pumpkins are so famous for, uh, particularly in Siamese Dream. Um, so yeah, it's really cool. I'm gonna I'm definitely gonna be boxing that up. It sounds great. I don't, I don't have uh, I don't have a fuzz that sounds quite like that. Uh, kind of like a modern modern sounding sort of fuzz with a uh, a really sort of scooped uh, uh, mid range. Uh, yeah, it sounds great. Once again, if you want a PCB, head over to doitselfguitarpedals.com.au. Um, sorry, DIY guitarpedals.com.au um, and pick one up. Uh, it's part of the DBE range, so they'll be priced very economical um, and uh, build your own. Hope you liked the video. Um, give me a thumbs up. Any suggestions, things you want to see, um, or, uh, or comments or opinions, um, leave them in the comments uh, below. And uh, I will see you in the next video. See you guys.